The book I'm reading is called Barack by Jonah Winter and illustrated by A.G. Ford. Looking back, it's hard to believe how far he has come. The man whose name the world now knows, Barack Obama. This is a journey that began in many places. It began in Kansas, home of Barack's mother. It began in Africa, home of Barack's father. It began in Hawaii, one moonlit night, the night Barack was born. Sometimes it was a sad journey. When Barack was just a toddler, his father moved far away. Sometimes it was an enchanted journey. When Barack was only six years old, his mother brought him to Indonesia to live with her new husband. For young Barack, Indonesia was the most exotic land. His stepfather kept an ape as a pet and two crocodiles. But it wasn't all wonderful in Indonesia. There was poverty unlike anything Barack I, young eyes had ever seen. And sometimes Barack felt very out of place. Who am I, he wondered, surrounded by his Indonesian classmates. He looked different from them. He spoke a different language. His birthplace was thousands of miles away. Where do I belong? These were the questions Barack would ask again and again on, on this most unusual journey. But when the journey brought him back to Hawaii on home to attend an American school, the place where he belonged was with his loving grandparents who took good care of him until and after the thankful day his mother returned to Hawaii with his new half-sister Maya, only to go back to Indonesia, taking Maya with her. Oh, sometimes it was a confusing journey. When Barack was only 10 years old, his father just showed up one day, a total stranger. Who was this man? Barack would wonder through the years, for this was the only time that he ever saw his father who had long since moved back to Africa. And when his father packed his bags to leave again, Barack could not stop imagining what his father's homeland, Kenya, must be like. On the other side of the world, there were half-brothers, half-sisters, aunts, uncles. They wore different clothes, they spoke a different language, and yet they were his family. <clears throat> Where do I belong? The voice inside his head kept asking. In school, he had friends of all different backgrounds, African-American, Caucasian, Hawaiian. He belonged with them all, but still, Barack's mother was Caucasian. His father was African. So what did that make Barack? For Caucasians, it simply made him black. For some African-Americans, though, it made him less African-American. Who am I? Oh, but this was a journey on which Barack would find out exactly who he was. From his college days, when he learned how, how much he could move people with just the power of his words and his speech, to his early days in Chicago, where his job was helping poor people help themselves, and helping them for, for very little pay. Some people thought he was too young, too privileged to ever understand their poverty. Sometimes it was a lonely journey. What am I doing here, he often wondered. With the cold Chicago wind in his face slowing him down, pushing him back, but he didn't give up. For somehow his journey had led him to Trinity Church, surrounded by the people from his neighborhood, including many he had helped. And, and there, swept up in the waves of their singing, with tears on his cheeks. He knew why he was there. He knew who he was. And he knew where he belonged. He was there in Chicago because he cared about these people. They were his family. People in Kenya were his family. Indonesians were his family. And no matter where he was, the world was, was his home. And who he was could still sum up in one word, lovable. When you learn to love yourself, you make it easier for others to love you. That is what happened to Barack, who started climbing a ladder of popularity that led him to a seat the Illinois State Senate. 
and then farther up to, to the U.S. Senate. He arrived here during dark time in America history. All across America, people were losing their jobs, losing their house, losing their sense of hope. Many people were tired of, the, of a war that had, that had gone on too long. They were tired of fighting with their neighbors over politics. They were just tired. In an earlier age, there had been hope. There had been a man named Mark, Martin Luther King Jr. who had spoken with passion of his hope for, be, for better days. He had said, I have, a, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. And on the horizon, at the dawn of a new age, there appeared to be a man who would be the embodiment of King's dream, a presidential candidate whose very being was a bridge that joined nations. Here was a man who spoke of hope and change, whose strong words lifted up the downhearted people and made them believe that the world was not beyond repair. Here was a man whose journey had brought him to cheering rallies all around the world, all around America, including one in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham was a place where policemen had once turned fire hoses on African Americans, who for many years were made to sit at the back of the bus, drink from separate drinking water fountains, watch as their churches were burned to the ground, and here, right here, this great man spoke in a beautiful voice about his own dream of bringing people together, overcoming our differences, not just, as, not just in America, but around the whole world. Here, right here, in this country with its history of slavery and racism, an African-American named Barack Obama rose to unimaginable heights because he refused to let other people tell him who he was. Because again, once again, his journey was just beginning. Thank <laughs> you.